Quick job. President. Please, please be seated. Please be seated. The chamber is back in session. And the floor is given to the international co-prosecutor to resume your question to the expert. You may now proceed. Thank you. Sir, when we left off, I was asking about your estimate of the pre-DK CHAM population. In your book, E3-1822, Okuba, in footnote 5, you list sources for your estimate of approximately 700,000 CHAM. And I want to ask you about some of them, but first of all, let me just list the sources. In your footnote 5, you have Zakaria Adam. À la note de bas de page Rez 5, donc la. Zakaria Adam. Rez Ban la. Mat. Ban Mat. Mat Li. Mat Li. Sos Kamri. Sos Kamri. Otherwise known as Kamaruddin bin Aussi Yusuf. Connu sous le nom de Kamaruddin Ney bin Pina. Yusuf. And an inspector in the inspection Pina department of the Ministry of Cults and Religious Affairs, Tress Saron. Is it correct that you religieux. have uh, that these donc, seven Sources are what you relied on, or part of what you relied on, for that 700,000 figure. Sources que ces sept sources font vous avez, donc, sur I would like to correct réponse. the figure. In my book, it's not 70,000, but it is 700,000. And the figure came from my interviewees who gave the same number. And in consultation with materials given from the department, from the Ministry of Cults and Religious Affairs, Mr. Tresarom, and from other material, the book published by Nai Pena, and Mr. Soh Kamriya, these individuals gave similar donc, estimate of the figures ont aussi, and ont aussi donné this des particular individual semblables. worked Cette for work for the CHAM Council and these five sources that I Cham. rely on gave similar Et donc, figures, les personnes que consulté, and that's why I came to my conclusion that I can use this figure because it, based on the similar estimate given by the five sources I received. Sources, euh, Thank you, sir. And um, I clearly understood in the book you said 700,000. Oui, uh, in footnote 5, there actually are seven sources, so I just want to ask you about a few of them. One of them you just sources. mentioned, Ney Pena. Can you tell us who is Ney Pena? Ney Pena. Ney Pena. Qui est Ney Pena? I read Ney Pena's book. Lu, euh, I believed Pena. he was a high-ranking official il était in the government that established after the fall of the Khmer Rouge in 1979. Du gouvernement Starting also with the first source you cited. Zachary Adam, de la première source que you vous indicate that he Adam. said he had seen statistics on the CHAM population, sur la population Cham in Cambodia compiled by, forgive my pronunciation, but Raja Tipade. Who is Raja Tipade? Raja Tipade? 
if you know. Si vous le savez. Chmur Bakwat. His name is Resla. Son nom est Resla. And as for Raja Tepadei, is a honorific title given to him by the Ministry of Interior for his important role in supervising the Cham people during the Sungkumrian Yom regime. And I can compare this honorific title to the current title in, in current use. For example, the Oknya. Oknya. For example, Oknya Sokkomrei, which is a title given by the king to the Oknya who was in charge of supervising the Cham people in Cambodia. So, the honorific title Raja Tepadei was in many ways the same like the honorific title uh, that is in use right now. Okay, thank you very much for correcting that. Clearly, I misunderstood. So just so we're clear, I had two separate sources. The first source, Zachary Adam said he spoke to Ray La, who has the title of Raja Tepadei the former Grand Mufti, grand, grand Mufti, who told him about seeing these statistics. Is that correct? Do I understand correctly? But Trump, yes, yes exactly. uh, you are right. Okay, thank you very much. Now, do you know how any of Question. these statistics Merci or beaucoup. estimates were made? Were they made by a census? Were they made by asking leaders at some level, whether it was village or higher level, for the number of dirigeants d'un niveau quelconque, combien de chambres m'habitaient. Et si vous ne le savez pas, vous n'avez qu'à le dire, je vous prie. Réponse. Mr. Richie Tepadei Rehla, in his official role as the mufti or supervisor of Islam affairs, des affaires musulmanes, Chief of religious Islam religious leader in Cambodia. Un chef musulman donc ou un leader musulman au Cambodge. He it it is not different from the current mufti. Non, cela n'est pas bien différent du mufti actuel. They have structures from at the provincial, district and village level. Il y a des districts au niveau du village. This morning I talk about Hakam. Ce matin j'ai parlé des Hakam. Hakam is an individual in charge Les of the village. Les Hakam ont la responsabilité and au niveau du village. And he is under the structural supervision of Mufti. So the reports rencontre au Mufti. At the community level. Il est donc un responsable au niveau Hakam needed to make the reports and compile the figures and send the reports to Mufti at the provincial level. And then the Mufti at the provincial level compile them and send the reports further to the Mufti at the national level, who was at that time Mr. Richie Tepadei Rehlo. So the Figures compiled by Mr. Richard Tepadei Rehlo came from the reports by the different levels of the hierarchical orders. So it's the same thing like the muftis at the present time, Et un peu comme la who also euh, has sous le his own actuel, uh, qui a hierarchical orders of uh, structure of reporting. Pour les okay, thank you. Um, I want to go Merci. back for a moment to document E3-9680. This is a document 
recently added at the request of the defense. This is your letter, de, sir, to the Phnom Penh Post in March 2006. You talk about, on the second page, page the first lettre, full paragraph of a Mr. Sen Mat, Sen Mat, who you say, I'll read what you wrote. Et je vais vous citer. Mr. Sen Mat, aged Monsieur 92, Sen -Mat, âgé worked with the French in the memo rubber plantation in Kampong Cham province. Français à la plantation he told me Memo that he once saw the French Cham. record the names of over 300 plantation workers, most of whom were Cham. The French rubber industries were simply Cham as Cambodian rubber sap collectors. Des Personnes qui Sir, where la collecte was de it? Under what circumstances did you interview Mr. Senmat? Non, Monsieur l'expert, pouvez-vous nous dire quand vous avez parlé à Monsieur Senmat? Look, Senmat. I interviewed Senmat. Oui, J'ai interviewé Senmat. For the purpose of writing the article. Pour, euh, enfin, au fin de mon article. I did not include the information from. The interview with him into my books. Les renseignements qu'il m'a dans le cadre de cet entretien ne s'est pas retrouvé dans mes ouvrages. I asked him whether he saw the census carried out Donc, by the French si during his working at the rubber plantation, and I used the answers from my interview with him to write the article. Et ces réponses pour rédiger mon article dans le cadre de la rédaction de l'article. Okay, thank you, sir. Question. Merci. I would like now to ask you about a um, part of your book. Je vais maintenant vous Okuba. poser uh, quelques questions. Uh, it's on page 120 of your book. That's E3 1822. And the French ERN is 075831 In this appendix Donc, to your book, dans cette annexe, you have listed the difference of some villages Vous avez and the difference in the numbers of families or persons dans in those villages between 1975 and 1979. I would like to ask you about that and add up some of these numbers. De ces et et Your Honours, I believe it would be helpful for all of us to follow this, Donc, if Madame your honors and counsel, juges, and I've given it to counsel, have a copy suivre. of my mathematics. Uh, I don't want that. I'm not asking that to be admitted into evidence. Je ne bien sûr pas que It's simply soit I've added in the column uh, the loss the column of individuals, perte uh, the difference between 1975 and 1979. So my first question is, Donc, would that be permissible, please, to just Permettez-vous permettez que tous puissent suivre sur ce document que j'ai fait circuler. Je ne veux pas qu'il soit versé au dossier, mais je veux simplement que vous ayez sous les yeux les calculs que j'ai faits. Je pense avoir des copies pour tous, et bien sûr pour chacun des juges. Le Président. Uh, the chamber gives oui, the floor to Judge Lavergne. Oui, Monsieur le Procureur, si je comprends bien, il s'agit juste de faire des calculs Deputy de faire des chiffres. If I understand correctly, you should, you should just uh, calculate on the basis of the figures uh, that are provided on the experts' book. Are you working on that basis, on the basis of the list? Yes, but perhaps. Le so I'm so I'm completely oui, honest with your honor, with your honors. Perhaps just monde. one question I should first Et ask the witness demander without une question, suggesting une question anything to him before I complete my answer. Avant de and that is, ma Mr. Witness, Donc, le témoin, you talked this morning about estimates of matin, families, Cham families. Du, de du nombre de familles Cham. When we're talking about the period 1975. De la, what is your understanding of what an average family would contain in terms of, first of all, does that include grandparents, children, parents, and enfants, what was the average size et, et as far as the number of people? Moyenne de Mr. Witness, the number of 
tùm lo Peoples In Cambodia Regardless of Cham people or Khmer people les gens, enfin, Que ce soit les Cham ou les Khmer In Some villages we do not know the specific, num the specific numbers of people. Le nombre exact d'habitants, d'individus. But we know the families. Families consisted of La famille, husband and wife and le children. Le couple et leurs enfants. So... I gave the estimated figure. Donc, in each village, in, in, in each family, there consists of five or six Chaque members. That is the approximate uh, voilà. number. Le chiffre approximatif. Would families, Question. does that also coincide Mais with a household, with those that live together in one house or dwelling? Un foyer, autrement dit, le nombre de personnes qui vivent dans une même maison. But they share Réponse. the same house oui, ils vivent, euh, sous un même because toit. when we call a family, it, Une famille. it is for the purpose of receiving gifts from the government, even until the une, present time. Un concept. Pour the ce, calling of une a family is for the purpose of receive, receiving the gifts from the government. For example, donc, each family receives exemple, one bag of rice, un riz, one sarong. Un sarong. So, it's, it's hard for the villagers to know about the number of Donc, il est people in the village. De le the villager know only about the Les approximate numbers of families in the village. On the, only the village chief who have the statistics about the numbers of people in the village. Thank you. What about the situation Merci. where there were grandparents or situation even des grands parents ou même des living together with their children and grandchildren? Leurs Uh, would that be considered one family? Est-ce que l'on considérait cela comme une famille? Uh, réponse. Yes, that exact. is correct. It is called a family. On appelle cela une famille. Okay, thank you, Mr. Procureur, so, merci, Monsieur Judge Donc, voilà, Monsieur Judge Taverne, fully answer pour répondre question. à votre question uh, de façon complète. It is mathematics. The one thing that I added that I wanted to check is I multiplied the number of families by five, that's taking what I thought was a conservative estimate, I think from the witness's testimony, he said a family averaged five or six, and that it is a conservative estimate in accordance with this witness's testimony. So, all that I've done is taken the figures that the witness has given for villages, for the number of families or individuals in these villages in 1975 and 1979. I believe it's a total of six villages where he lists families and two he lists individuals. I've multiplied the number of families by five. As the witness has just indicated, an average family would have five or six, so a conservative estimate would be five. And I've added all those together. Can I just add something? Uh, if, if there is no request to take this onto the case file, si it is understood that you will refer to all of this in a way which allows us to follow your à ces documents calculations or questions on the record only. Mais ce sera simplement yes. pour faire de transcription. Réponse, oui. Sinon, nous devons décider de le verser au dossier ou non. Car euh, au cours des dix prochaines minutes, vous allez euh, parler de toutes you sortes de chiffres. Et cela nous permettra de vous suivre, mais la transcription ne sera Yes, now I, que de ce I que vous avez dit, no pas le document. Le procureur, oui, je n'ai aucun problème à ce que le document soit versé au dossier, mais c'est à la Chambre de décider. Je vois que mes collègues de la barre ne veulent rien savoir de cela, donc parfait. 
et cela permettrait au moins aux témoins et aux juges de pouvoir suivre les calculs que j'ai faits et, et de le contester, le cas échéant, ce qui est bien sûr toujours possible. Président, en tant que je vous avez la parole. Euh, oui, euh, Monsieur le Président, je vous remercie. Yes, Mr. President. Là, je dois dire que je suis... Euh, je, je comprends euh, et je, je comprends et je dois dire que je respecte la volonté que nous puissions suivre les chiffres. And, uh, mais de là à faire intervenir un document qui a été élaboré par M. le coprocureur comme étant un élément de preuve de dossier, je pense qu'il y a un pas à ne pas franchir. Je pense que, euh, en suivant, je comprends la logique de M. le coprocureur, même si je, je ne suis pas très bien les fondements euh, chiffrés. Je pense que avant de poursuivre euh, sur ce document et sur les chiffres. Euh, Peut-être que euh, il faudrait demander à M. l'expert quel est le fondement de, 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 de son, son calcul moyen sur quoi il fonde pour dire que dans une famille il y avait euh, à peu près cinq membres. Euh, quelles, quelles sont ces sources euh, exactes pour savoir euh, après si on peut faire des multiplications sur la base de ces estimations, mais l'origine de l'estimation, je dois dire que je, je ne l'ai pas encore. Euh, je n'ai pas encore le fondement. Donc, euh, ça, c'est la, la, la première observation et well il est clair que, uh, uh, sur le principe de verser un document qui a été élaboré par M. le procureur, uh, uh, au dossier, uh, je, 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 je m'y oppose. I would object Maintenant, to that. Euh, les questions peuvent être formulées d'une autre Now, façon. Il me semble que M. le procureur ne se pose pas à pouvoir poser And, uh, des questions de façon à ce qu'on puisse se référer aux documents élaborés par M. l'expert, à savoir le droit bar de l'étude de l'étude de l'étude. Uh, 1832 as the basis for asking these questions. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une courte observation. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to make a brief remark. Would it be possible for us to have a copy of the document so that the parties can follow the, the debate? because we, the civil parties, don't have that document. I just want to come back to the record issue, because if we all of us read this record in half a year, nobody has any idea what we are talking about. So, as I said, if this is just to help us to understand what you are going to say into the record, I think that's fine, but then there should be some structure. I will certainly try to structure it. Yes, I will try to structure it. Of course, we will ask the witness who has already given his basis for the family estimate. I will ask him to explain how families are constituted. I will ask him also the basis for these figures. Simply one to help me understand the chiffres. I will ask him also the basis for these figures. Simply one to help everyone follow the math. I will ask him also the basis for these figures. Simply one to help everyone follow the math. I will ask him also the basis for these figures. Simply one to help everyone follow the math. I will ask him also the basis for these figures. Simply one to help I think, of course, someone reading the transcript in the future will go through the same mathematics and will come out with the same figures. Il y aura les mêmes chiffres. So I'm just asking: Is it possible for me to have a copy of this handed to the witness so he's able to follow my questions? Les questions que je lui pose. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President, the prosecutor, your request is granted. Court of Sir, please bring the document from those prosecutor and hand it over to the expert. I'm sorry, but if it's handed to the witness, I think it needs to be on the witness. We need to know on what basis the witness answers. We need to know on what basis the witness answers. We need to know on what basis the witness answers. We need to know on what basis the witness answers. We need to know Indicate that I planned to read everything that I've added to this into the record. So the whole record of the mathematics and the calculations will be on the transcript. All that I've written will be read at the end of the hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Thank you, You have a list of certain villages, and you list in your book the population 1975 and 1979. What I've done here is added a third column for the difference 
pour uh, créer le résultat d'une soustraction, so donc first la perte of all, de 1975 à that you have Comment avez-vous obtenu ces chiffres que vous avez, dont vous avez dressé la liste à la page 120 de Okuba? Response. Réponse. In uh, my book, each figure um, was supported by reference and uh, footnote and reference based on my interview with um, the person who survived the regime, who told me the number or the figure before 1975 is this figure, and after that is um, this figure. For example, in the village of Mok, dans le village um, de Sokumbre told me this figure Sokumbre and in Choi Changwa Kraum I received Kram. information from uh, Zakaria bin, bin Ahmad, Ahmad qui m'a uh, donné ces chiffres là and the same is true for other villages comme les autres villages and I would base on the witness who gave me reliable information. So uh, the, figure, the figures here are recorded based on the witness account uh, through my interview. Thank you. So going through, first I'm going to go through the villages where we've listed families as opposed to persons. There's only two where you list persons, and that's Kopal and Pus. Paul et so going Pierre. to the ones you've listed, families, Donc, Akmok, Akmok, you said 1975, 1975 1, 100, 1, 100 families, 1979, 1900 families, for a difference of loss of 1,000 families. Indique une perte de mille familles. For Choi Changwa Chang Kraum, Krom, the Ekraksai Mos, le, Mok, le, le you said there were over. 1,000 families in 1975 and 30 families in 1979. So using the figure of 1,000 rather than anything above that, the loss would be 970. For Don Pen, in 1975, 150 families. In 1979, 100, a loss of 50 families. In Samrong, 40 families in 1975, 4 in 1979, a loss of 36 families. Sva Klang, 1,240 families in 1975, 120 families in 1979. So in this, your, your home village, a loss of 1,220 families. In Trapang Chuk, 254 families in 1975, 192 families in uh, 1979 for a loss of 62 families. In Treya, you said about 1,000 families in 1975, 579 for a loss of 500. Now, sir, I total that number of families from those six villages to be 3,838 families. Using an average of five people per family, you said families averaged five or six. Vous avez dit that would total approximately 19,120 people. First of all, do you follow my mathematics and do you have any comment Tout or criticism of it? Avez-vous compris les calculs que j'ai faits et avez-vous pouvez-vous réagir avez-vous une critique quelconque à ce sujet? Response based on my research that I rely on information given by my interviewees. I think 
the number of laws, um, which is 19,120, is accurate. If it based on um, five member in a family, is the um, number below average. Because as uh, you well aware, uh, the charm family or charm uh, people, um, uh, they have a belief that they cannot uh, protect uh, their uh, children, so they uh, would like to have more members in family. So uh, five members in a family is below average. So in the past, each charm family uh, would have more than six members. President, please hold on. Uh, uh, could you hold for a moment? Prosecutor Judge Lawan, you may proceed. Yes, I have a question of clarification here because we're speaking about losses. I would rather see this as a difference between a population at a given moment and a population at a given moment in the future. So is the, because the idea of loss leads us to believe that the people died. That's how we can understand it. In any case, it's ambiguous. So do we agree that this is a difference in terms of the population number? Because maybe people left and went somewhere else for various reasons. Maybe they escaped abroad, maybe they settled in, in different areas. They did not necessarily die. Yes, that's a valid point, and I'll oui, follow that up with questions. Now, sir, we've talked about the difference in families Monsieur, in 1975 and 1979, the number of families. Um, is, as the judge just explained, Comme just stated, correct, that these people you interviewed were talking just about the number of families that had returned to those villages? that were living in those villages in 1979? Respond, yes, correct. Do you have any information, or would it be speculation on your part as to what had happened to those families that didn't come back to the village, whether they were living somewhere else or had died. Respond. The number of families that lost in total, it's about 99% uh, of a family die of um, execution, of um, illness, uh, starvation, and uh, only a few people who uh, could um, fled and survive and live abroad. And in this area, the Khmer Rouge to control over uh, this location before 1975. So um, only a few people could uh, flee and are now living abroad. And so it is impossible to say that they uh, are living in other villages. So traditionally, the Cham people would come back to their community or their villages um, in order to know whether their family members and community villagers are uh, living and return. So it is impossible for them to stay in another village and not return to their original or home village um, in this case. After 
the fall of the regime in 1979, based on your interviews with Cham people, did they indicate to you that, that whether or not they wished to return or did return to their homes to live with other Cham people, to their home villages? Response. I didn't meet with anyone who told me that um, never come back to their origin or uh, the village, the home village. And when they return and met each other, uh, in their home village, and then some of them moved out to another places where they can do better farming, or in their home community, um, they could not find their relatives or family member, um, they uh, would leave. But most or all of them who survive are returned to their home village. Another factor relevant to the calculations is you stated this morning, I believe, in talking about Svaklang, you told us that about 120 families were all that returned in 1979, and you told us that those 120 families were not complete. Is that correct? Do I recall correctly your testimony that not all the members of the families that returned were still alive? que les membres des familles qui sont revenus n'étaient pas tous en vie. But response. Yes. Réponse. This is my home district. Oui, c'est mon district natal. Um, my family returned to our home village. Ma famille est revenue uh, dans son village. At the time natal. I was grown up. I saw only houses, empty, no villagers there. It's only a uh, very few family who return uh, to uh, the home village. And I was young then, but we did the count and uh, asked each other how many families of us survived. And we did the counting, and then uh, we found only 120 families. And in 1975, there were 1,240 families. So the loss is not uh, 1,220, it is uh, 1,120. Donc la perte n'est pas de 1,220, mais de 1,120. Yes, and that's reflected in the third column of my um, calculations there. So, sir, I want to move on to the two villages that you list numbers of persons as opposed to families. And so reading those into the record, for Copal, for 1975, you list 1,864 persons. In 1979, 180 persons for a decrease of 1,684 persons. In Pius, you listed in 75, 1,005 persons, and in 1979, 558 persons, for a decrease of 447 individuals, adding up the decrease in Copal, 1684, Si je fais and in Pus, 447 chiffres, leads to a total of 2,131 individuals. And if we add that figure, si 2,131 individuals from Copal and Pus to the estimate we made earlier from the other five en fait villages that you listed by families, that is a decrease of 1,000, excuse me, 
19,120 individuals. Then we have a total in these eight villages of a decrease of 21,251 people. Sir, do you follow that and does that accord with uh, your understanding of what the people you interviewed told you? Lors de vos interrogatoires, de ce que vous ont dit les gens. Now, in Kopal and Puffer villages, réponse pour les villages de Kopal et de Puffer. The persons whom I interviewed gave me the exact figures of individuals and not the families, and that is why I use the same. Uh, numbers of persons and not the families. This is rather different from other villages where the figure of families were mentioned. And if you multiply the number of families by five or by six, the, the number could be a bit uh, different. Thank you. So thank you, sir, and I'm, I finished discussing these uh, population figures you have on page 120. Perhaps the document you don't need anymore. However, in, on page 120, in the next uh, paragraph after that table, you say this, in addition to the numbers in the table above, the Khmer Rouge killed almost the entire populations of 10 Cham villages, see below. The four or five persons left alive could no longer live in the villages or decided to abandon their homes and take asylum elsewhere. On page 121, you list 10 villages. And I want to go through those with you. First of all, is this correct, my understanding, that these villages in page 121 are those that you referred to in the previous page where virtually the entire Cham population was wiped out? But yes, that is correct, uh, Réponse. international co-prosecutor. Oui, there are 10 Cham villages, Il y a dix villages Cham. as stated on uh, page 121. On and these villages are located in Kampong Cham, Kampong Thung, and Kandal provinces. Previously, there were a lot of Cham people who live in these uh, large villages, although I did not have the uh, figures for the Cham people. However, after the Khmer Rouge uh, collapsed, none of the villagers returned to these villages. In some of these villages, only a few families returned, and, they, and then they were waiting if other villagers would return. But, uh, there was none, so they abandoned their native villages and went to live elsewhere in other villages. And after that, these ten villages uh, no longer were called the Cham villages. They had been the Cham villages since after they fled the Champa. But with the total loss of their community members, they abandoned their villages. And currently, they are also uh, known as the villages where the Khmer people reside and not the Cham people. Thank you. I just want to go through this list of 10 villages and make sure we understand where they are located. Um, and in what administrative structures they were located during the DK regime, if you can help us with that. So starting with, um, and perhaps you can follow along the names because my pronunciation is probably bad, 
By K. By K. Is it correct that that's in La Via M district? By K. Se trouve in Candel province. La Via and that would have been, is it correct, in the southwest de zone? Candel, dans la zone sud-ouest. When I refer to the uh, geography of the VM, and according to the administrative division of the Khmer Rouge, it is located in the east zone. It's a, a Cham village, and I have some relatives who lived there. My father, when he came to Phnom Penh, used to tell me that I had a quite a number of relatives who lived in Bai Kai village. And it was not far from where I lived. It means we just uh, crossed the river and we would be there. And however, the relatives never returned to the uh, village. And Bai Kai was no longer a, a Cham village. Et Bai Kai plus un village Cham. At the, the moment when we cross the river to the other de side, there is no more Cham village côté, there. Il avait plus de village Cham. Okay, so Bai Kai was in Kandal province, but Donc, part of the east zone. Dans la is that province correct? De Kandal, mais faisait partie de la zone est. Est exact? But through my recollection, geographically on the other side of the river that is on the VM, the area belonged to the east zone. The next village, Potonli, was in Kotong district. Would it be correct that that would have been in sector 42 of the central zone? De la zone centrale. Uh, no. Réponse, non. Potonle village is le village located de in Khartoum district. Se trouve dans le district de Khartoum. And it is in sector 25. Dans le secteur 25. And not a 42. Et pas 42. And it is in the uh, special uh, zone. Se trouve dans la zone spéciale. Later on, I believed it was uh, reassigned to be part of the southwest zone. Plus tard, il me semble que ce village a été. I'm going to skip the next five for just a moment. So going to. Uh, Question, je vais sauter les cinq villages uh, suivants et je vais eight. aller au numéro huit. Kvau. Village wow. in Prechor, village qui se trouve dans le Cham. district de Prechor, province de Kampong Cham. Where would, what zone or sector would that be in? Do you know? Quelle zone et quel secteur, à quelle zone et quel secteur cela doit ce village d'être rattaché? Originally, Kwar village. Au départ. Was le village de located in sector 41 in the north. Zone. Dans le secteur 41 de However, la zone in 1977, the sector was reassigned to be part of le the central zone. A été de la zone centrale. The next village, the ninth listed, is Chamkar Lu. Question, le neuvième village répertorié est Chamkar Lu à Krochma. Would it be correct that was sector 21 of the east zone? Est-il exact que ce village était rattaché au secteur 21 de la zone est? Yes. That is uh, correct. It is in sector 21 in the east zone. The last listed is Tour Lavang in Barre district. Would that be also in the, cent in the central zone, sector 43, or could you know where that is?
Tolavien village. Réponse. Le village de Tolavien is located in sector 42. Dans le secteur 42. It is like sector 41. Initially, it was part Et of the north zone in early 1977. However, it was reassigned to be part of the uh, central zone. Now, I skipped and I wanted to come back to you have five villages listed from Kampong Siem district. Koprak, Chamkar, Samsep. Krakor, Korakar. What sector and zone were those villages in? In fact, you may serve one village that is Laang. And they all belong to Kampong Siem district. Au district de Kampong Geographically, Kampong Siem district is part Kampong of sector 41, sector 41, belongs 41. to the north zone, and in zone early 77, it belonged to the central zone. So thank you for that correction. It's actually six villages that you've listed there. Question. Merci de cette correction. Vous avez effectivement répertorié. I want to read to you something again from Kiernan about Kampong Siem. This is E3 slash 1593. The English ERN is uh, English is at page 260, and in French it's at page 336. There's no Khmer translation. He indicates that the neighboring riverbank district of Kampong Siem was also in Region 41. In 1940, 3,800 Cham lived in the district. By 1975, the Cham population had reached 2,000 families in seven villages. Then he says, quote, all have perished, unquote, the new government claimed in 1980. It has not been possible to confirm this assertion, but the one independent account available from Kampong Siem district is suggested. In Chan Nieng village, 12 Khmers were killed in 1975 to 1978, of whom eight were new people. But in 1977 alone, 13 families of Chams were murdered, over 80 people in all. So, Mr. Witness, uh, the Kiernan has given an estimate that by 1975, in Kampong Siem, there were 2,000 families of Cham. Uh, do you have any comment on that estimate? Have you any au sujet de cette estimation? I do not wish to uh, make my conclusion that the uh, 2,000 families is a character of or not because I did not conduct my research in uh, Kampong Sim. I only knew that uh, certain villages where the Cham people resided, they were no longer there. Through my interview, Kampong Siem used uh, to house uh, many Cham families besides the uh, Kochma district, was uh, Kampong Siem, and then there were those who live in Kormir and Strong Trong. These are the districts situated along the uh, river banks. And in this quote, uh, Bian Kennan asserted that there were 2,000 Cham families who lived there. I, w I do not wish to uh, make the same conclusion. Uh, further research needs to be done. And maybe those who used to live in Kampong Siem district may know. And I also wish to add that uh, at present, there is a village in Kampong Siem district, which is called Kroko. 
and it is located in it Kampong Krabai commune. That is the only Cham uh, village remains. Village the rest of the Cham villages no longer exist. As for the uh, number of the Cham families or the Cham individuals, they had settled in uh, the area since 1979. However, the total numbers remain, seems uh, to remain unchanged despite uh, new children are born. And the same thing uh, applies to uh, some other locations, uh, despite the, the birth of uh, babies, the number of the charm families remains low compared to the original number of the charm people living there before the Khmer Rouge regime. Thank you. Well, sir, in your book, The Cham Rebellion, you do give a couple of accounts about what happened to those people from Kampong Siem, those Cham people who seem to have disappeared. And this is first, you have something from an individual, an interview with Matt Sarin. This is at English 00219193. My 00904402. There's no French translation. Matt Siren, you quote as saying, in 1978, they began to kill off the Cham people. This time, the killing was carried out publicly, not done secretly like before. He says, he goes on to say, they killed the Cham in every village in Kanmias and Kampong Siam districts. Those who survived were the people who had been evacuated away to far away areas. Do you recall anything about this interview with Matt Sarin? au sujet de cet entretien avec Matt Sarin. Yes. The account of this witness uh, testimony is no different from other accounts uh, from other witnesses whom I interviewed. There were mass killing that happened there. That is in 1978. In, in fact, starting from 1978, uh, the ki 1977, the killing became intensified in Kampong Sim, Kong Mir, Trang, and certain other locations uh, as they conducted the, the, the purge. They actually rounded up the Cham people and they were taken away and killed. No Cham people could uh, survive the ordeal. In, uh, you, you have another account from Kampong Siem. At Khmer, the ERN is 00904408. And in English, the bottom of 00219210. There you quote Ismail bin Abu Là, Samas, a witness Samas, from Koka commune, Kampong Siem. You quote him as saying, in 1978, en 1978 Khmer Rouge announced that there were 2,000 clandestine enemies within the sub-district. That caused me some amazement as the number seemed really excessive. Several days later, their cadres came and wrote down the names of every, every single Cham in the sub-district. That certainly made me suspicious because there were about 2,000 Cham residents just matching the number of enemies they had calculated in advance and already announced. Then they chose Cham men for killing first, he go on to say, he said, after the men had been rounded up, they gathered up the women and children for killing. Do you recall speaking to Ismail bin Abu Samas? Yes, I recall that. Mm, réponse, oui. Je m'en souviens. 
the CHAM that were targeted for killing during the Khmer Rouge regime, were they limited to military age men, or was it common for women and children, as in this account, to also be killed? They killed with uh, discrimination. They killed those who were uh, charm. In 1977, it was difficult for the Khmer Rouge to distinguish the charm from the Khmer people. Uh, so by that time, the charm people had been evacuated to live mingle with the Khmer people. And that started since 1975 after the rebellion. So charm, uh, some charm people uh, adapted themselves uh, to the way the Khmer people live. They forfeit their religious practice. They forced themselves to eat the pork. Se sont they associated du with the Khmer people Et and they could speak Khmer fluently. And for la uh, the Cham children, they Les actually Cham forgot to speak the Cham language. La langue Khmer, la langue Cham. So it was very difficult for the Khmer Rouge to identify who was Cham and who was Khmer since qui? they mingled amongst uh, the Khmer people. Khmer. The children belonged to the children's unit, the youth belonged to the mobile enfants, les unit, dans and les the old people mobiles, lived with the Khmer old people. Avec les the Khmer Rouge then Khmer. came up with a Donc, policy. Except for a any charm, wherever they uh, recite or which units they belong to, les champs, peu they, dans ils se retrouvent, they were requested to return to uh, unite with their family members, pour, uh, since now the country had been uh, uh, liberated, enfin libéré. and they appealed to all the champs donc, people to come to, champs to uh, unite with their families and their native villages. Dans leur village natal. The Cham people were so happy Et to hear that, and they decided to return nouvelle, to their uh, native villages. Village and even in Krochma, they actually Krochma, uh, returned to uh, their villages. Ils sont dans leur village. And the same thing applied to those in Kormi and Kampong Sim. They returned to their native Kormi villages in order to find natal, the remaining family members. members de la and once the Khmer Rouge saw that they all came to their native villages, they were all gathered up without discrimination, whether they were children or whether they were women, they were all gathered up for killing. However, there were some jam who decided not to return to their native villages and decided to live with the Khmer people. And sometimes it was the Khmer people who actually stopped them from going to their native villages and asked them to wait a bit more to see whether the situation improved. And those charms survived. But for other charms who decided to return to their native villages, most of them were gathered up La and killed. Ont été rassemblés et ont été in Krochma uh, village, they were sent to be killed in village Trier village. The village of Krochma, they were sent to be killed in Trier village. At a pit there, or they were killed and Là, dropped off into the Mekong tués, River. Ou alors ils ont été tués et jetés à même le fleuve Mekong. In Kampong Siem, the way they à killed the young people ouais, was uh, different. Ils ont tué les gens de façon différemment, de, dif de façon différente. And in Kormi, there was another execution yeah, site uh, for the Cham people at the Otrokun Pagoda. Pagoda Otrokun. For the youth who did not receive that information and did not return to the native village, were rounded up in one place. Village natal, ils ont été they were interrogated, they were asked about their ethnicity, and, and, some, of the and some of them told the truth that they were Cham people. And uh, some were concerned about their safety, and they didn't know inquiet. which answer to respond. So dire. they said, uh, Donc, some said they were Khmer, or some said they were uh, half blood. Uh, As yes, their mother or father was Cham. So those who responded that they were a mixed blood or they were Cham would be placed in uh, one group. Cham, and those who responded uh, as Khmer, they were placed in another Khmer, group.
And for those who responded that they were jam or mixed blood, they were killed. And that happened in Tria village. So first they clarify about the ethnicity before they were run it up, put in that group and killed. And those who responded that they were smiled, some of them survived. Le président. President, thank you. Merci. International co-prosecutor, thank you, Mr. Expert. International et merci à l'expert. Let me adjourn the hearing today and resume tomorrow. That is Wednesday, 10 February 2016, commencing from 9 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow, the chamber continues to hear the testimony of the expert Issa Osman. And Mr. Isausman, the Monsieur Chamber, uh, thanks you for uh, your testimony. However, it is not yet concluded, and you are invited to return uh, tomorrow, commencing from 9 o'clock in the morning. Matin, and Madame Julie Badesh, the Chamber is grateful uh, of uh, your presence uh, in your capacity as the OCIJ legal officer. You may also be excused, and please return you tomorrow. tomorrow. Court officer, please uh, oui, collaborate with Wisu to uh, turn Mr. Isausman to his residence and invite him to return chez lui tomorrow, uh, starting from 9 o'clock in the morning. Security personnel, you understand the security that we accuse Nunchi and Kiss have gone back to the detention facility and have them returned to attend the proceedings tomorrow before 9 o'clock. The court is now adjourned.